Hey everyone, Liam here. So today's video is the second part in the Tyranids uh, High Fleet Titus series. As I said previously, this is going to be a short series. It's only going to be three videos, but today's video we're going to be covering how I painted the blue carapace and the the blue chitin in general, and also how I did the blue brain on the on the Tyranids and how I've quickly blended it to get that faded transition. And I'm also going to really show you that actually it's not that well blended these are army pieces so i haven't spent a huge amount of time on it like i said in the last video i can't spend a lot of time on it so i'm going to show you how i quickly blended it and how i hid those bad blends with the brush strokes and the veins and that sort of stuff so it's going to be a short video but i hope it's helpful let me know in the comments if you've got any feedback and if the video is helpful and you like the channel then hit the subscribe button it's a great help thanks very much so this is the gene stealer as it stands i've base coated the carapace with black i don't remember what black it is just pick a black so the carapace is black and then what i've got is this is vallejo game color magic blue and what i've done here is i've added a little bit of black to the blue and I've started painting lines on the carapace from the inside of the carapace, from the spine, going outwards. Now, the reason why I've added a little bit of black is firstly, the blue, the magic blue is really, really vibrant and I don't want bright colors on this army. So the black just dulls it down a little bit. It desaturates, it takes away some of that vibrancy. It's not a huge deal. Um, if you don't want to do it, but for me, it, it makes a difference. I don't, I didn't want this army to look very bright. So the process here is nice and simple. We're doing it exactly the same way as we did the skin. Remember, this whole model is all about painting lines. Now, I will say from a teaching point of view, from a you learning or you becoming a better painter, this is actually a great way of painting to really improve your brush control because painting lines is actually really important when it comes to higher quality painting. It's a skill that's amazingly helpful. But anyway, so you can see on screen, nice and simple, start from the inside and then work your way back. The reason for this is, is remember where you remove your brush from that model, you're gonna have the brighter mark and where you put that brush on the model, you're gonna have a less bright mark. So we're using our brush stroke and our control to straight away give us a transition where you start the brush stroke is going to be not as bright as where you remove the brush stroke so really important and as you can see i've literally just painted lines so next up we are we've added a small amount of vallejo model color sky blue now the consistency for this paint is exactly the same sort of thing as we talked about with the skin video if you haven't seen this the video on the skin the link for the whole playlist is going to be in the description and in the comments, so check it out and it will help. But what we're looking at for consistency with this paint is we want a nice hard mark, so you don't want this paint too thin. So this probably got one part water to one part paint, but the idea here is that it leaves a nice hard mark with hard lines at the end on, on either side of every mark. So if your brush stroke is one line, either side of those lines, you want to see a, you don't want a soft transition from the color next to it. You want a hard transition. You want a hard line because we're building up these lines to give us the effect that we want. And when you're thinking about your consistency, actually, we're not even worried about the paint being too thick to obscure the details because there are no details here. We are creating details with this paint. So if the paint's a little bit too thick, it's not really a problem. The only time the thickness of the paint is gonna cause you an issue is with fluidity. And what I mean by that is how easily your paint flows on the model. How much resistance are you getting on your brush when you move it from one point to another? I know that seems crazy. It's quite an advanced thing to think about. But if you run your brush along a model and you're not getting a nice hard line, you're not getting a nice consistent line, sorry, then 
that paint is probably too thick because it doesn't have enough fluidity, it doesn't flow well enough. So just something to think about in that regards. But all we're doing here with, with this particular colour is we're going over everything we've done, but the marks are slightly smaller. We're not going as far in towards the spine as we did previously. And the reason for that is, is we just want that progression. So we've got black, blue, lighter blue. And also the gaps between these lines, we need to think about that. Remember, we don't want a solid blue everywhere. If some of the previous blue shows through on these blue lines on the chin, that's great because it just adds interest. How much of a gap you leave between the lines, that's entirely down to you. Personally, I'm gonna vary it across the army and actually at the end of the video, when you see the Broodlord and the Gene Stealers together, you can see that the Broodlord will actually has less gaps between the lines. It has a more consistent and more uh, solid color progression. Whereas in the Gene Stealers, have got a lot of gaps. It's, it's a very different finish. But I think when it comes to painting more organic materials, a lot of variation is a really good thing. It makes things really interesting. So, you can see I've gone over it. It's really nice and simple. This is a really simple process. So once you've done this, next step is just exactly the same, but we're gonna use that pure Vallejo model color sky blue to get the last final highlight. And we're just gonna do it in really small places, in, in very small areas. And I'm not even gonna do it towards the whole carapace. I'm only going to do it towards the two top shoulders, but I'll speed the video up here because you don't need to see all of it. You don't need to um, hear me ramble over the whole thing. this is it you can see that we've got our brights points and it's definitely brighter towards the top of the shoulder pads near the head which is what I want across the army and it's quite a simple process right so next up we are going to paint the brain now this takes a little bit of bravery but should be fun just don't take it too seriously paint bravely and try and enjoy it what we're gonna do is first of all we're going to put some blue we're going to go to this magic blue and you can see how vibrant it is I haven't thinned it down uh, a lot I've thinned it so it doesn't obscure any detail but I still want a solid color going on and you can see I'm putting one layer of blue on this model and that's it so the reason for it not being too thinned as well is because I want it thick enough so it doesn't dry quickly so I've slapped the blue on the brain I want the brain blue and then I'm getting the light brown from the skin tone that we had. So this is Velo again, color light brown. Exactly the same sort of consistency. I don't want it too thin. I put it on the side of the head where the brain is going to meld, blend into the face. And then all I'm doing is I'm going to mix those two colors on the model. So the best way that I can explain this is you put the two colors next to each other rub off the excess paint off of your brush now it's worth noting that i'm not cleaning that brush because i'm happy having the paint on the brush and then i'm gonna i use a side to side motion and i mix those two colors together so your brush is going side to side and then it's moving those paints together and then that's it what will happen is the light brown has got a little bit of yellow into it so the it will give the brain a little bit of green in. So that'll change things up a little bit and it will just make a very fast, soft transition. Now it's worth noting, I've got 15 gene stealers to do. 
I have not done this quickly on any of them and I have not done a particularly great job on any of them either. So this is how I hide those poor blends. So I'm gonna paint the veins on the side of the head. Now, the gene stealers have got veins sculpted on the head, but I have extended it further into the brain because that helps with that dodgy blending. So all I'm doing here is I'm not painting lines in this case. I'm, I'm painting dots. So where the veins are on the side of the head, I'm painting dots along those veins. And the reason for that is, is the dots will make that mark inconsistent. If you do a line, it looks very unnatural having this very hard straight line with these consistent edges to either side. And you don't want that. So if you do it with dots, what happens is, is you get an inconsistent line. So the edges are not all the same. The, the width of that line is not the same diameter. And you also get an inconsistent paint mark you get because your paint in one case is going to be more opaque on one dot and less opaque on another dot. So it gives you a nice inconsistent line. So this time we're painting dots, I'm afraid. But you can see on the side of the head now, I'm following those lines. And then when the sculpt disappears, so it no longer has a sculpted line, a sculpted vein, I'm extending that with just by painting more dots further into the back of the brain. And straight away, just by doing this, most of these gene stealers have got one or two on the side of the head. Because these models are so small, it very quickly masks that dodgy blend that we've done. Now, as always, if I was doing this for a client or if I was doing this as a competition piece, a display piece, I'd be far more careful about it. But this is an army. I've got a lot of models to paint. So this is one way of quickly masking that dodgy blend that you've done on these gene stealers. Last stage of painting this gene stealer. My problem with this at the moment is the blue is too vibrant, so I need to tone it down. So first thing that I'm going to do is GW Nolan Oil. So I'm just slapping a bit of a wash over the carapace bit on its head um, and the brain itself. But I'm not actually using this wash as you would a traditional wash in the sense of normally you put a wash on and it slips into all the recesses and, and that's the point. In this case, I'm not at all. I'm using the wash to tone down the blue. So I want it to leave marks and puddles. It gives it an inconsistent result. So when I put the wash on, I'm then dabbing that wash on like a stippling motion. The reason for that is, is it will give the blue almost like a bit of a, a mottled result. So there'll be darker parts of the blue on the brain. There'll be lighter parts. So that tones down the vibrancy, which makes it look a bit better, but it also makes it look dirty. And I also, it's still a bit too bright. The problem is, is that blue is very smooth. So the next stage that we are gonna do is, as you can see on screen, I'm dry brushing that Vallejo game color, light brown from the skin tone. So there's really not a lot of paint on this, on this brush, but I'm just dry brushing over the brain and what that's going to do is it's going to tone the brain, tone the blue down again. So as you can see on screen, the blue is far less vibrant now. And then that also ties in with the last stage of the model where I've been handling it a lot. There's bits that have worn off. So over just the top mark, top sections like the claws and the ridged carapace, I've just done a quick dry brush and then that covers up any bits that may have worn off. <clears throat> and that's it. That's the process for painting the brain and painting the blue carapace. So the last video, I'm gonna show you my process for basing, how I made the base and how I get a lot of variation in how it looks, so it looks a lot more natural, and also how I painted it. So it's gonna be quite a quick video, but I think for the completion's sake, I'm showing how to do the tyrannies, I should show how to do the basing. And yeah, so hopefully this is helpful. If it was, as always, hit that subscribe button. Feel free to share. If you want to support me, if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon which I operate all of my online tuition through and my mentorship. So if you want tuition, if you want me to help you with your projects, get in touch. If you want to commission me at all, my links for my Facebook and my Instagram and everything is in the description. And if you want to check out any of the other videos, the link for the playlist for this one will also be in the description. So thanks very much and uh, cheers.